Hey folks, welcome to the Ravit Show. I'm super pumped about today's episode because we are talking about a challenge every organization is facing, how to manage your data in the AI era without uh, losing your mind or your budget, right? Uh, <laughs> so joining me is someone who is deeply in this in this space, uh, Kamal Hathi, GM of Splunk Enterprise. Uh, Splunk just released a very powerful new report, uh, the new rules of data management and Kamal is here to break down, uh, break it down for us. Uh, so Kamal, welcome to the Ravid Show. It's your debut. I'm super excited to hey. be hosting you today. Yeah, thank you, man. I'm so pumped myself to be here. Uh, uh, really uh, excited. Hopefully I can share some interesting insights, but in general, fantastic to talk to you. Fantastic. Kamal, just for our audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Yeah. Tell us more about what you do at Splunk. Yeah, sure. So I'm the general manager of Splunk, the Splunk business, uh, and Splunk, as you know, is acquired by Cisco. Right. And so my job is to, uh, you know, build a great product uh, and make sure that we um, have a, you know, lot of value for our customers, a great business with Splunk. Right. And before Splunk, I spent a long time in the industry with Microsoft uh, on data, data-oriented things. I was one of the earliest people working on something called Power BI at Microsoft. Nice. Which, uh, and, and analysis services and SQL Server and those kinds of things. So, you know, love love working with data and super happy to be here. Thank you, Kamal, for that background. Also, uh, I'm just going to jump right in because I saw the new report and I'm super excited to chat about that. Yeah. Uh, so, Kamal, I've got to start with this garage metaphor for sure. The report says orcs are stockpiling data like old camping yeah. gear and lawn tools. <laughs> so... Yes. What's your take on it? Uh, why it feels harder to, you know, uh, harder than ever to get your value from the data uh, that we've collected? Any thoughts around that? Yeah, I mean, taking this garage metaphor, maybe uh, don't want to take it too far, but, you know, it's folks like me, my, my wife is super organized. She makes things properly set. It's, you know, well thought through. There's a strategy, what to keep, what not to do. Right. I, I'm a hoarder. I hoard stuff. And I get this, I keep it, I keep that, I keep it. And we end up with with a with a with an environment where someone asked me, like she asked me, hey, can you find that? Then you know, it's like throw things around and you find something finally. It takes forever. The amount of effort required right. to the value delivered is not in proportion. So mm -hmm. what you really need to do is and data is like that. You can keep you know garbage in, garbage out, throwing data in and and can, but if you don't end up, you know, really coming up with a way to segment it. To right. have a strategy to finding it. Hoarding doesn't help anybody. And this is especially mm. true for data and certainly for my garage. Yeah, I think uh, you've kind of given a good example in terms of how, you know, organized versus unorganized also kind of play a very important role. And um, what, uh, you know, uh, I also saw a very interesting stats in the report that said 91% of orgs are spending more on data management, but a chunk, a big chunk can't calculate the ROI. And I talk to a lot of enterprise leaders myself, so I kind of see that disconnect. Uh, but what do you think, where should uh, leaders be focusing instead of that? Yeah, this is theme I see all the time. It's been, when right. it comes to I haven't seen for a while with this notion of a data warehouse. And then we get into you know uh, uh, systems that are about data lakes, right? Data with, you know, uh, the, but the, the implication is the same. It is just collect the data, throw it into you know the, these things that, that are just places you can you can store. Volume becomes a thing. Mm. But volume is is one aspect. It's it's exploding. There's no question. And as more and more volume comes in, it doesn't solve the problem that the customers really have that that all of us really have. And which yeah. is to get insight, to get value. So data as a volume is commodity. Insights, mm. analysis is the actual value. And as a result, our approach with Splunk is very much to help our customers, you know, respond to the compliance pressures they have of right. all this data, being able to, you know, really get the ROI via analytics, via search. We sometimes talk about this needle in a haystack. When someone mm -hmm. has a problem, a security mm -hmm. problem, forensics, if it happens to be, why is my server running slow? Anything right. that I need to figure out, I need to be able to do it rapidly. I can't go into my, that garage metaphor and start you know, throwing things around. Fast, mm -hmm. quick, structured, organized, uh, yet over a vast amount of data. And so mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons I think why the you know ROI isn't quite there because the focus is on collecting. The focus is not on searching and analyzing. 
and meeting the compliance need, meeting the needs of the organization. And that's what we really enable. So again, collection is commodity, analytics and search is where the real value is. I love it. I love that analogy where you kind of, you know, obviously uh, focused, you know where the commodity is and what uh, matters yeah. the, really to the leaders as well and what they should be focusing on. So thanks for sharing that, Kamal. I also saw another very interesting stats, uh, and that was wild to me at least, uh, which said only 13% uh say they have actually unified visibility which is which is very interesting to be honest but how do you see you know splunk thinking about visibility without unnecessary data moment what do you think about that yeah and this is really important actually if we think about uh and we're putting a few things together out here yeah this notion of you know collecting data uh and you know really somehow, as you said, you know, not being having this, this unified visibility. Right. Uh, the other thing we talked about a little bit um, was in terms of, you know, that, that clutter, that, that amount of, of um, uh, mm -hmm. stuff that's just piling up. And here, the, if you think about it, the goal really is, is, is this notion of separating signal from noise. Right. There's a lot of noise, especially in, in this world as, you know, AI, is coming in and there's data exactly. is coming, data on the network, data on the machine, data on the application. There's a lot of noise. Mm. Getting that signal out is really important. So how yep. do we do it, right? And there's a couple of things that that we can uh, you know, really think about. And one is this notion of you, know, you can't keep moving data around. It has mm. to be in places where you already are, are you know, collecting it, managing, etc. And the other thing that's important is this notion of close to the data being able to what we call doing you know edge processing starting mm -hmm. to, to separate out noise from signal so if it's Splunk, we just exactly what we do we have this notion of what's called data federation and data federation right. really means working with data in various different sources right. being able to federate it in terms of querying search analytics really getting uh, value out of it without having to move the data around being able to at mm -hmm. the source itself, processing it, and you know, get the signal versus the noise. And this is really important if you think look at things like security, where right. you, you want to understand when data you have about the network, you're able to start looking at is there lateral movement, is there a threat that's keep take, that's about to take place, right. and you don't have the luxury to copy data around. So you do it mm. in place wherever data happens to be. Hopefully, you are able to apply some degree of pre-processing to reduce the volume. But then you can combine it with other data that you have about your application. Maybe you have data about the infrastructure uh, in other places. Look at the network in that context. And now you can start to make decisions very quickly. Yeah, I think uh, those are fantastic insights, Kamal. Uh, one quick thing you mentioned about, you know, obviously about federation, data federation. and federation isn't just about you know the convenience it's more about how smarter or faster decisions are right yep exactly right and that's what i was you know saying is that smarter faster but also you know broader inclusive decisions mm, okay. here the real uh, goal uh, you know remains for us to be able to make decisions based upon relevant data Right. Not just a stuff that we have put together. And that's why Federation allows you to do so uh, in exactly. a meaningful fashion. Yeah, no, I like it. And uh, thanks for uh, sharing that. Good point. Uh, one more thing around the report that I kind of saw was really good uh, in terms of uh, the statistics. Uh, and the report says that uh, 90 98 percent believe ai improves their data management strategy but it also creates new challenges like integration and scale yeah. um what do you think is the balance here so there's two parts if you think about it yeah in one part uh if you think about data data is the fuel for ai mm -hmm. right? Right. ai is like without data cross domain multiple domain data ai is kind of difficult to get value out of, right? 100%. So true, especially for the domain I'm talking about, which is machine data. Machine data is in, is, this is not about looking at, you know, a few words in a document. This is petabytes at a time. Mm. How do you make sense out of it? So for that, you need, you know, 
clean, accessible data. And when you talk about signal to noise ratios, you know, trying to really come up with what's relevant and what is just pure noise, really important. That powers data, right? Then comes this notion of AI itself can help streamline and right. power uh, how you make sense out of that data. Mm. And this is AI in assistance to things like observability, security, in assistance to what we call digital resilience. AI can help make you more resilient, right? Yeah. And the last part, which becomes really interesting, is in terms of, you know, not only do you need to use AI to help you to make better decisions, yeah. but new systems that are built on AI actually have their own needs that are special. You have LLMs and you have semantic databases, all these things, they require mm. special understanding. So there you need to have special approaches. So this yep. combination of data that's available, that's clean and accessible using AI to make your data management strategy more powerful and useful, and mm. then having a strategy, how to deal with new emerging AI applications. All of that put together can really start you know, giving you an advantage by leveraging AI. I love it hundred uh, percent, and I agree in terms of you know how you can leverage AI as you know you just need to be uh, at places doing things. Uh, so, uh, Kamal, uh, that's a good point. Uh, one last question I have, uh, and because you talk to so many customers, you talk to so many partners out there, is what's like the biggest mistake you see teams making when you know modernizing their data management, and what should they yeah. keep in mind while doing that? That's, thank you. Good question. Uh, and we talked a little bit about this before. Yeah. I think one of the things that sometimes is forgotten is the outcomes. Mm. What are you after? The insights, the analytics, like those oh. are the important things. Yeah. And data management sometimes takes a life of its own. People focus on storage, storing. Storing, mm. as I said before, remember, is commodity. It's not value. The value is insights, outcomes, analytics. Right. Similarly, people get caught up in tools. They want to add more tools. That they're going back to the garage. Yeah. This is about, oh, I need a new lawnmower. I need a new weed cutter. <laughs> and meantime, the garden is just like you know, out of control because you're yeah. not focused on the outcome. And right. so this importance about you know, clear strategies that are available, understanding the governance requirements, which is really becoming important in this world, having mm -hmm. clarity on you know, how you're going to get analytics, how you're going to get the insights out of this data is really, really important. So tools and tools you know, holding is not value. It's consolidation, getting right. data structured right, and deriving insights. That is where the value is, and that's where the focus needs to be. I love it. I love how you mentioned about, you know, obviously how focused you should be on the tools and sometimes having too many tools can be confusing yeah. at the same time so focus on that and then uh, you know obviously there can be a lot of modernization that can happen in the data management world um this is fantastic discussion uh but i promise this is once the last question kamal sure. if folks want to reach out to you learn more about the new rules of data management report i'm definitely going to share like a link with them so they can download the report but if they want to reach out to you, which is the best place, LinkedIn, X, yeah, LinkedIn you... is great. You know, um, go to Splunk, uh, Splunk.com. You can learn more about uh, the, the report, uh, what we're doing, yeah. and you know, just reach out. And I'm happy to engage in a conversation. And um, yeah, it'd be great to, to to hear back from from the folks who are listening on the show. Thank you. This is awesome. Kamal, such a pleasure chatting with you on the Ravid show. Uh, looking forward to keeping this conversation uh, continued. We'll obviously chat more about different things uh, in a 2.0 version uh, on the Ravid show. Uh, yeah. But thanks for all the insights. And for those who are attending us today, obviously, if you're serious about getting your data house in order, go check out the new rules of data management report. I'm going to share a link with you all so you all can download and learn more. There are some fantastic uh, insights, some statistics and some eye openers. So don't forget to tune in and don't forget to download the report. But thanks again, Kamal, for doing this. Uh, such a yeah. pleasure hosting you on the Ravit Show. That's my pleasure, Ravit. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending us today. Thanks. Thanks.